Hey, Chip, Dad wants you to answer the door. I am. Where the ace horse? Hey, get the door! If it's Jean, tell her I'll be right down. Come on in, Chip. Hi. Hi. Is, uh, is this the Douglas residence? Yes, sir. Well, is the lady of the house in? Bob, somebody wants to see you. Cook the dinner, clean the house, wash the dishes, <laughs> answer the door. I don't know what they do around Madam, them. I know you're simply going to... <laughs> oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. Oh, that's all right. It happens all the time. What you peddling? Well, uh, cosmetics. <laughs> oh, boy. Have you got the wrong house? Oh? I'm the nearest thing to a lady around here. Come back when somebody's married. Yes, I'll, I'll do that, sir. That'll be that. <laughs> Bob, I can only find one black sock. I'll just wash them. I don't pair them up. <laughs> hey, Robbie, you have any of my black socks in your room? I don't know. I just wear them. I don't check the colors. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah, where are the Azores? It's probably right where you threw them. Is it in the ocean someplace a good enough answer? Well, that's a good start, but... Uh... Here, why don't you take a look and see if they aren't still around Portugal somewhere. Hey, that line! I got it! I got it, that's one! I got it, Robbie! Give me the floor! I got it now! I think I've line. got it! Hey, hey. Does it have to be two falls out of three every time the phone rings around here? Your grandfather's right, I'll take it. I'm expecting a call, Dad. Well, so am I. Hello. Who? Yes, he's here. I told you it was for me. No, it's for me. It's for Chip. Chip? Chip. Me? It's a girl. Jeepers, does everybody have to look? <laughs> Hello? Where'd you get my phone number? <laughs> and what do you want? Chip. We're supposed to study from page 11 to page 13. Goodbye. Hey, Chip, who's your girlfriend? She's not my girlfriend. Are you engaged yet? You know what you are, Robbie Douglas? You're a great big dumb. Not to get sore, we're only kidding. Sure we are, Chip. When are you getting engaged? Hey, 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 Chip, Chip, Chip. Come on, come on. Come on. look out, you're gonna tear his shirt. Jeepers, stop. maybe he is engaged. I said, knock it off, Now stop. That's enough. Well, Jeepers, tell him to quit. That dumb girl. Chip, why don't we go out and give Bub a hand with the dishes, huh? You great big dumb. <laughs> what surprises me, Robbie, is how a guy with feet as big as yours keeps putting them in his mouth. <laughs> well, let's... You dry. Okay. Wait a minute. Chip, uh, who was the girl on the phone just now? Nobody. What do you mean, nobody? She must have a name. That dumb Doreen Peters. Doreen Peters, huh? You were sort of rude to her on the phone. What's the matter? Don't you like her? If she were a bug, it sure would be fun to step on her. <laughs> what did she do? Beat you out of something or throw you out at first base or what? Worse than that, she she hangs around all the time, makes goof eyes at me. Goof eyes? Yeah, every time I turn around, she's looking straight at me with her clunky old eye. How do you mean? Like this. <laughs> Eyes. Well, Chip, I think you ought to feel flattered. Sounds like this girl has a crush on you. No, she hasn't. She's in love with me. <laughs> sure, she tells everybody. Last Valentine's Day, everybody gave each other a nickel Valentine. And she gave me a 50-cent one. Greater love hath no woman. Huh? Oh, nothing. I can see you have a problem, Chip. You probably get embarrassed when she does these things in front of your friends. The guys call me Hot Lips Douglas. Hot Lips Douglas? Well, I don't think this is any reason to be unkind to Doreen. Yeah, but who wants to get married in the second grade? But she wants to get married, huh? Sure, if I hadn't kicked her in the knee a couple of times, we would have been married in the first grade. Oh. Mr. and Mrs. Peters announced the marriage of their daughter Goof Eyes to Hot Lips Douglas. Well, I can understand you're not wanting to get married, uh, Chip, at least for a year or two. So if you want to avoid her, and I gather you do, I 
do it in a way that... Well, so you don't hurt her feelings, you know? I mean, I wouldn't do any more of this uh, kicking her in the knee. But jeepers, I want to get... What is a gentleman? A kind man, Dad. That's right. And do you think you're being kind to Doreen Peters? I get sick to my stomach just when you say her name. <laughs> now, look, Jim. Why don't you try being patient with Doreen? At least for a little while. She'll get over this. When? Well, I couldn't tell you exactly, but she will. How about giving it a try? Well, okay. Good. You'll just have to remember, Chip, that uh, we handsome Douglases are always going to have this little problem. Yeah. It's a real drag, isn't it? <laughs> How am I going to get the paper? With a sky hook? If you go out there, she'll ask you if I'm home, and you'll have to say yes, and I'll have to go out there and talk to her. Ooh. That dumb Doreen Peters. Well, now, what's wrong with her? She, she looks pretty cute to me. Boy, have you got busted eyes. Yeah, well, when it comes to looking at women, my eyes are as good as... Uh-oh, the cat's out of the bag now. Your father's home. Is he talking to her? Okay, Hal, see you tonight. Thanks for the ride. Hello there. Hello. Are you Chip's father? Yes, I am. How do you do? I'm Doreen Peters. Oh, yes, I've uh, heard about you. How are you, Doreen? I've been to the store. Yes, I see you have. If you tell Chip to come out here for a minute, I'd holler, only it isn't ladylike. Well, Doreen, I'm, uh, I'm not sure whether Chip is home or not. Yes, he is. He keeps peeking out the window. Oh, he does. <laughs> Well, in that case, I'll uh, get him right away. Thank you. Come back here, you coward. Chip, you're scum. Dad will me go out there. Chip, you'd better go out there and talk to Doreen. See? Do I have to, Dad? Yes, you have to. She seems like a very nice little girl. But she saw you peeking out the window, so you go out there and see what she wants. She never wants anything. All she ever does is... Chip? I'm going. And don't forget your promise. You'll be sure and say something nice to her. That's usually the old child psychology. Oh, sure. We tell them what to do, and they do it. <laughs> I didn't take long. You're sure you said something nice to her? Sure. Like what, for instance? I told her she had a swell-looking bag of groceries. <laughs> At least he didn't kick her in the knee. Chip, this is the last thing I'm going to say to you on the subject of Doreen. If she comes up to you at school or if she calls you on the phone, you'll be nice to her. And if she comes over here, you go out and talk to her. And none of this swell-looking bag of grocery stuff. But jeepers. Okay, Dad. Have I the Douglas word on it? Okay. Hands, that's a bacteria farm. How come Dad isn't here? Well, he's having dinner with Hal and Nancy Mosby. Are they still trying to find him a wife? Yeah, he's the kind of a guy that has to be trapped. He'll be a bachelor for quite a while yet. What's a bachelor? That's a man who thinks before he acts. And then doesn't act. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Nancy. Steve. This is Pamela McLeish. Hi. Pam, this is Steve Douglas. Hello, Steve. Hello, Pam. I've heard many nice things about you. Oh, thank you. What, shall we go in? Uh, Douglas, that's, uh, that's Scottish, isn't it? Well, about as Scottish as they come. <laughs> McLeish certainly is. Certainly is. Well, what do you know? That gives us something in common. Yeah, what do you know? <laughs> Hello, Chip. Hello, Doreen. 
Well, Mr. Douglas, your son and I are having a little talk. <laughs> yeah, well, so long, Doreen. Oh, that's all right, Chip. You can stay out for a while. <laughs> Gee, your father sure is handsome. Yeah, that's a problem us Douglases have got. <laughs> Just a minute. It's that dame you met last night. Want me to unload her? Oh. Oh, talk to her. Hello, Pam. Hello, Steve. Uh, look, I, uh... Well, I don't usually call men up, but, uh... Well, sometimes a girl just gets in the mood to cook a meal. Well, the refrigerator's just bulging with all the essentials, so... Why don't we include you? Well... Yeah? Oh, pardon me, Pam. Yes, Chip? I've been polite to her for a long time now, and I'm getting a headache from it. No, you've done fine. Go on home, Doreen! Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're having a little trouble with our diplomacy. Yes, it is kind of short notice, but that's all right, except, uh, well, I'm not sure what Bob has planned for dinner tonight. Well, it, it was just a thought. I'm not having anything fancy. Well, are you going out? I don't know. Why don't you find out and then call me back? Oh, no, no, I didn't mean I don't know. I, uh, what about my dinner? It'll be all right. Good. Shall we say about 7.30 then? Well, when I said it'd be all right, I... I meant uh, it'll be fine. 7.30. Fine. Goodbye, Pam. But I made goulash and noodles. Well, it won't go to waste. You know that. The kids will eat it. Mm, that's like cornered down three manholes. Well, I couldn't very well get out of it. You heard how it happened. I got trapped. Yeah, by a real expert. Oh, come on now. I'm sure the only thing she has on her mind is cooking dinner for a few friends. That's what they said about Lucretia Borgia. The next time I plan a meal around here, I'm going to throw it out in the first place. Boy, he's really sore. No, he's not really sore, Chip. Your granddad's quite a guy. If you're not poisoned by the time you get home, you might find a hunk of my pecan layer cake in the Hi. Hello, Pam. Come on in. Thank you. It's nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you. May I take your hat? Yes. Oh, uh, I hope you brought your appetite. Oh, I brought it. <laughs> Good. Uh-oh. Goof eyes. <laughs> Am I, uh, early? No. No, you're right on time. Well, then the others are late, huh? Others? Well, I somehow had the impression there were going to be other people. Oh. Well, I, I guess I ought to be more careful how I phrase things. <laughs> Was that your father-in-law who answered the phone when I called you? Yes, yes it was. Did I hear you call him Bub? Oh, Mike started that when he was little. Every time he tried to say Grandpa, it came out Bub, and well, he called him Bub ever since. <laughs> how long has it been? Well, how long have you been a widower? Six years. It's a long time. Yes, I guess it is. <laughs> that's a nice view you have. Yes, that's why I took this apartment. The view. Isn't that the gas company on the left? <laughs> to me, they're just lovely lights. <laughs> I hope you like candlelight. Oh, sure. Comes in handy in case of a power failure. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, Steve. What shall we talk about? Well, uh... How about, uh, baseball for a start? Hello, Bob. Hello. Boy, you sure slept late today, huh? Well, that's what Saturday's for. Big party last night? No. I misunderstood some way. It ended up just the two of us. Uh -huh. We had dinner in her apartment, and then we went to a movie, and then I came home. 
Just the two of you, huh? Suppose you ate by candlelight. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we did. Soft music? Well, it wasn't too loud. <laughs> I noticed you didn't eat any of my pecan layer cake when you came home last night. Lucretia must be a pretty good cook. Yeah, she's pretty good. Oh, of course, not half as good as you, Bob. And her name's not Lucretia, it's Doreen. I, I mean the cops. <laughs> What'd you have? You know, it was so dark, I don't remember. How about dessert? Uh, no, thanks, Bob. Not for breakfast. I mean last night. Oh. Gee, you know, I've, I've forgotten. I barely tasted it. Oh, candlelight, soft music. That sounds kind of romantic. What album did she play? Something to trap a husband by? <laughs> Look, Bob, I think I'm old enough to know when a woman is trying to, uh, as you say, trap me into marriage. And you know something? You're right. <laughs> I think maybe she was. So there won't be any more candlelight dinners with Pamela McLeish. Dad? Hmm? When the letter says, Master Chip Douglas, does that mean it's for me? Sure, it's for you. Yeah, I'll open it for you. If it's from school, I knocked Charles Terry into the drinking fountain by accident. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it's, a, it's an invitation. It says your presence is desired as partner to Miss Doreen Peters at the pre-junior teen dance and so forth. Uh, signed by Doreen's mother. I don't want to go. Of course you want to go. Here, look, it says they're going to have refreshments and an orchestra and everything. Can I go alone? Well, almost. Uh, you might have to dance a couple of dances with Doreen. I won't dance with that clunky girl. I don't know how to dance, and I'm not going to learn neither. You can hit me and throw rocks at me and cut my ears off and throw me down a well, and I still won't learn. <laughs> That's pretty good. Come on, Chip, relax. One, two, two, one is Catherine Murray. You be quiet. Don't bother us now, Robbie. He's still got the bunny hug to learn. Hey, fellas, would you mind holding it down a little? And Mike, I told you to get off that phone. Somebody just might want to call us, you know. Ah, uh, you... Uh, no, uh... <laughs> Boy, you sure have been a sorry lately, Chip. Lay off, will you? This guy's got a lot on his mind. And answer the door. Come in. I could have done that. Dad's trying to rest, dummy. Yeah, yeah, Dad was up. He's pretty mad. Hi, oh. I'll do. I'm Pamela McLish. I uh I just brought something for Mr. Douglas. Oh, thank you. Oh, come on. Oh, for goodness sake, the fellow tries to take it. Oh, Pamela. Hi, Steve. Hi, uh, I was just taking a... Uh, uh, have you met the family? Well, no, I... That's the uh, boy's grandfather, Bob. It's Pamela McLeish. And... How do you do? Hello, Bob. Uh, Robbie, I mean, uh, Chip, the little one there. You need a haircut. Oh, come on, you're putting me on. And, uh, Mike. Uh, Mike. What? Oh. And Robbie. How do you do? Stuff your shirt in. <laughs> Won't you sit down? Get out of there, Trent. I can only stay a minute. I'm sorry about the way the house looks. It doesn't always look like this. Oh, it has a nice lived-in look. That's the way it should be. Steve, hmm? you remember how much you said you liked my cake last night? Oh, yes. <laughs> Did I? You not only said it, you ate three big pieces. Three? Huh? So, I thought maybe the boys might like to share it with you. That sounds good. What kind is it? Pecan layer. Here, you take it. I'm sure you'll know what to do with it. Uh, right. Take this out of the kitchen, will you? Well, it's very nice of you. Thank you. Well, that's, uh, that's all I came for. <laughs> oh, Chip. Didn't I see you dancing when I came in just a few minutes ago? Yeah, I gotta go to a stupid dance with a clunky girl. Yeah, you know, a week from tonight, uh, Chip is going to his first dance with a charming young girl. i sure rather go alone. Well, you've got to have a partner. Doesn't he, Pamela? Of course he does. Hey, why don't you come along so Dad'll have a partner, too? <laughs> is that an invitation? Sure, huh, Dad? Well, sure. But, uh, well, maybe she has something else planned for that night. No, no, as a matter of fact, I don't have a thing planned. I'd love to. Hey, it worked out pretty good. If you weren't coming along, Dad would have to stay in the car and listen to the ball game. Yeah. 
Is it time to go home yet, Dad? Well, not quite yet, Chip. <laughs> Doreen, would you like to go with me and comb our hair? All right. Don't you go away, Chip. I don't want to miss a single dance. <laughs> we'll be right back. Come on, Dad. Makes goof eyes of you too, huh, Dad? Yes, she does, sort of. If she was a bug, would you step on her? <laughs> well, let's put it this way, Chip. Uh, if anybody's going to be making goof eyes, I, I want to be the one to do it. <laughs> but you have to be kind to her, don't you? Well, yes. Because you're a gentleman? That's right, Chip. Dad? Is it being kind to someone to pretend you like them when you don't? No, I don't suppose it is, Chip. Don't you think we ought to do something about it? Yes, I guess maybe we ought to. But uh, we'll have to do it diplomatically. Swell, when they get back, let's kick them both in the knee and go to a baseball game. That isn't exactly what I meant. Uh, well, as you said, we have to do it like gentlemen. I mean, uh, what's the way to hurt their feelings? Okay? Okay. Okay. It's sort of fun being in the same kind of trouble together, ain't it? Uh, isn't it? <laughs> Got my key. This nightlife's a little too much for him. How'd you go tonight? Oh, five. You two going to double date again? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, you're awake. Huh? I'm going to put you down. You're getting heavy, man. Dad and me got rid of Doreen, that lady, for good. Shooting or drowning? <laughs> Talk and decided we ought to do something about the situation. How do you go about unloading women, in case I should ever have the problem? It's real easy. All you have to say is, thanks for the dance. I'm sorry I can't see anymore, because I think you give me a rash. <laughs> is that what you said to Doreen? Sure, you said to be polite. You did great, right up to the word rash. How'd you get rid of that Pamela? Would you believe it, uh, Bob? They had a seven-piece orchestra for just these little kids. Well, what'd you say to her? As a matter of fact, it was eight, uh, counting the leader. Mm -hmm. Chip, it looks like you're the only one that got rid of any women. Uh-uh, Dad told her, didn't you, Dad? Well, well, the opportunity just didn't come up. Jeepers, you mean didn't tell her? No, but I will, Chip. Sure he will, Chip. Well, I said I would, didn't I? As a matter of fact, I've already made an appointment with her for that express purpose. When? Come on, Chip. When? 7.30 Friday night. Is she gonna cook for you? <laughs> Good night, Chip. Soft music? <laughs> Quiet, no way, problem. Candlelight? <laughs> Candlelight? <laughs> Candlelight? <laughs> Rags for Chip's rag drive. Oh. <laughs> hey, Let's get out of here and stay out. Why you Oh, you two get out of here and stay out. Hey, quit horsing around, you blockheaded, knuckle-eared, stumble-footed monkeys. <laughs> Got 
Are they all rags? Rags? Yeah, you know, towels, dresses, stockings, anything you want to throw away. Goodness me. Well, let's see what you got here. Yes, you certainly are collecting rags. Does your grandfather know you're doing this? Sure, he thinks it's a great idea. Put him in the long boat till he's sober. Put him on the long boat till he's sober. Hi, Chip. How's the rag business? Swell, bud. Bet you I got another five pounds. Good. Remember, every ounce helps. <laughs> your father home yet? No, nope, just Bob. I see. Well, as for rags, I don't have much. I got rid of so many things when I moved. But I may get a few old things for you. Could you come back in 15 or 20 minutes? Sure, Mrs. Pitts. Thanks a lot. Miss Pitts. Just ring the bell, and I'll have it waiting for you. OK, Miss Pitts. I'll be back. Chip! Chip! Hey, Bob! Look what I got! <sighs> well, I guess I'll just have to take these over later. Oh, he'll be back in a few minutes for some of mine, Mrs. Saylor. Let me give him yours. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> just rings my heart. Poor motherless little boy collecting rags to get a little spending money. Oh, heaven, Cynthia. He isn't doing this for spending money. It's the annual PTA rag drive. All the children are out collecting. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> All the same, it's a sad thing for those boys to be without a mother. How I'd like to get at that little chip with a washcloth. Oh, don't you worry. Their grandfather will have them all shining clean by dinner time. <laughs> Bob. I certainly have my doubts about him. Till he's sober, put him in the longboat till he's sober, or lie in the morning. Look what I got, Bob. What do you got? Oh, what a load of rags, and boy, 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 look at that face. But you got an excuse this time. There's not a drop of water in the house. I can't do the dishes, I can't cook dinner, and I've been waiting for that plumber all day long. Chip, give me a little help here with your cover all, will you? Give him a tug there. Pull. Hey. Is he down 40 pounds yet? Well, it's hard to tell without weighing them. Because anyone who brings in 40 pounds gets a free pass to the Rialto. Now, don't you worry about that. We'll have 40 pounds before Monday. Here, throw these in. There must be a couple of pounds of paint on them. Gee, thanks, Bob. You're welcome. Is my desk finished yet? Yes, and I could have been through quicker, only I ran out of thinner. How am I going to weigh them? Weigh them? Well, wait a minute now. There might be a pillow slip in there you can stuff them into. Let's look. A pillow slip won't hold them all. I've got an idea. Here. Take my coveralls. We'll stuff them in here. Uh, they're nice and baggy. Boy, I'll say plenty of them. I'll go and see what Mike and Robbie have for you. I need to clean my dinner time. <laughs> You two guys are enough to drive a man to drink. <laughs> Come in, Chip. <laughs> now, you sit right over here while I sort things out. Is something wrong over at your house? No, just that Bob isn't able to wash the dishes or get dinner. Oh, and what time do you expect your father home? Not till after six. I see. Chip, how would you like some nice, fresh, homemade cookies? Oh, oh pardon me. Man! <laughs> 
Oh, that scared me. Me too. What is it? Oh, it's Chip's rags. Hey. Pretty clever. Yeah. Come on. Come on, buddy. Hit me right. Come on. Come on. I'm not going to hop. <laughs> hey, look. Wait a minute. Hey. Hey, it's got a head. Yeah. You know what, Mike? That kind of looks like Bub. Yeah, it does. Hey, uh, give me your rags and we'll stuff the arms. Hey, hey. Yeah. I have this dance model. Look on the look on the bench and see if we have an old pair of gloves or something over there. Hey, I got a some old pair of shoes and a cap. Hold it, wait. Yeah. Sure, are good cookies, Miss Pitts. Eat all you want, dear. And be sure to drink your milk. If I eat all these, I won't have much appetite for dinner. But you told me. That is, I understood you to say your grandfather couldn't cook dinner tonight. He'll manage all right, Susie. Get some good fresh water. <laughs> you don't see. <laughs> what I mean is, I have some fresh strawberries and ice cream for your dessert. Now you just sit right down here again. And there they were, carrying their grandfather into the house. <laughs> it's only too obvious that he's... Oh, Cynthia, really? Well, I have to believe my own eyes. One thing I'm sure of, there's no proper supervision over there until their father gets home. I wish you'd go inquire. But I haven't seen anything. I'd inquire myself if I knew them better. You know, I think you should. And find out just how mistaken you are. Well, Chip at least is getting proper care. Was he weigh? Five pounds. That's great. No, this will never work. We can't weigh him with you holding him up. Well, let's put him in a box and weigh him. Then we weigh the box separately and subtract the difference. How's that again? Simple algebra. X plus Y minus Y equals X. Sir Isaac Newton. All right, let's get a box. <laughs> Am I the only one that ever hears a doorbell around here? But we need a box. But we need a box. Is this a place that wants a plumber? Yeah, but we've been needing one since noon. You must have come by ox cart. No, I brought my truck. <laughs> come in, come in. I shut the water off out in front of the house, sir. The leak's upstairs in the bathroom. Second door to your right, the top of the stairs. I can't even cook my dinner until I get some water. You the cook here? Yeah, and you're the plumber. Second door from the top of the stairs. Well, look the situation over. See what tools I need. Five sets a step. <laughs> Excuse me, just a plumber. I'll be back when you're through. <laughs> if I 
find the leak? Someone in the bathroom, so I figured I'd cut some tools while I'm waiting. Well, that's a good idea. Just take your time. If you give those pipes time enough, they might heal themselves. Well, you never know what you'll need. But the job I had yesterday over on Elm Street, big apartment, old pipes, lots of rust, owned by a fellow named of... Uh, name of... Uh, funny, I can't seem to recollect the fellow's name. <laughs> Well, maybe if you had a pipe wrench in your hand, it would help you remember. Yeah, yeah. Bring the scales. It'd be easier to weigh them out of here. Yeah, I got the scales right here. Let's put them on. This way a little bit. Wonderful, Sir Isaac Newton. You can't even see the scale. Yeah. You know, what we need is, is one of those scales that you hang them on like this. Spring scale. Mr. Pearson has one of those things. Well, let's take them next door and weigh them. Come on. Alley oop. You got them? No. Okay. Okay. Yo, baby. Hey, you fellas seen Chip around anywhere? Nope. Well, run around the corner and see if you can find him, will you? Well, we're going to take Chip's rags over to the Pearsons to get weighed. Well, weigh him later. It's getting pretty late and he ought to be home by now. All right. Well, what are we going to do with him? Let's put him in here. Ah, uh, boys. Alley hoop. <laughs> Simple name like that. I gotta go turn the water on out front, see if we got it fixed. Be back in a minute. Oh, Chip! I can't imagine where he could be at this time of day. Maybe he's upstairs in his room and asleep. Come on, pal. We'll take you up there. All right. <laughs> I suppose that kid's run off to. Hey. Oh, 
I'm glad you finally got around to fixing that, Mr. Reeves. It's been leaking for two days now. I said it's been leaking for two days. Look, Daddy's talking to our dummy. <laughs> it's rough the dummy. It'll give Dad the shock of his life. <laughs> But I really gotta go now. All right, Chip. Here you are. I just heard a car drive in. I think it may be your father. <laughs> no, no, Chip. You mustn't go yet. No, 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 sit down. You know, I just remembered I have most of an angel food cake in the cupboard. <laughs> Cynthia, you don't happen to have an extra oh. cup of sugar, do you? Come on over in the house. I don't know why I forgot it today, it's but I... It's been awfully quiet over there. I can only imagine what's happening. I think you've been imagining too much already. I have half a mind to call the authorities. Well, now, look, Cynthia, before you do anything that foolish, I think you ought to go over there and talk to them yourself. A woman wouldn't be safe. Oh, <laughs> Cynthia, that's ridiculous. Well, I've known these people for the last ten years. Well, maybe I'll telephone. I really shouldn't leave Chip right now anyway. At least he said it. understand what I mean, Mr. Reeves. It was all a mistake. The, the boys thought you were a dummy. A dummy? Well, I, I don't mean a dummy exactly. They, they just thought you were a bunch of dirty old rags. <laughs> I mean, uh, are you all right now? Yeah, I feel just fine now. Just fine. 32.75. Not bad. For a dummy. <laughs> Thanks very much, Mr. Mike! Robbie! I sent him out in the station wagon to look for Chip. Oh, uh, good. I'll uh, just keep on phoning. <laughs> what's the matter? Are you getting nervous? No, I just happen to have the hiccups, that's all. We'll find him in a <laughs> minute. <laughs> Poor little waif. Well, I'll try to phone again. seen him. Well, oh no, no, we're not really uh, worried about him. No, no, uh, thanks, Mrs. Perkins. No, no, we're not really uh, worried about him. We just got nervous indigestion. Hello, Irene. Uh, Steve Douglas. Here, Steve, drink this. It'll make you feel better. Oh, uh, thanks, Bob. Irene, I, I, I know there's really no reason why you should know where he is, but have you by any chance seen Chip? Chip? Why, yes, Steve, I... Well, that is, I haven't seen him, but I think I know where he is. Oh, good, Irene. We've been sort of going around in circles over here. Uh, where is he? Well, I think he's at... Come on, Steve. Bottoms up. <laughs> I, I tell you what, Steve. Why don't you let me find out if he's still there? And if he is, I'll send him right home. Okay? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> You finally got hungry enough to come home to dinner, huh? Dinner? Are you kidding? Who's <laughs> wiped my rags? Nobody. They're up in your room. Now, never mind them now. Get washed. Chip, you where have are to you eat. Been? Hi, Dad. 
Now, just a minute, young man. I want to talk to you. Do you realize it's almost 8 o'clock? Hey, that's swell! Look, somebody made Bub out of my rags. You know, Chip, it's a little embarrassing. It does look like him, doesn't it? It's a little embarrassing having to ask other people where my own children are. Gosh, I bet he almost weighs 50 pounds. Yeah, well, you put that down and listen to me now. Chip, do you realize you're almost two hours late for dinner? <laughs> now, Chip, will you stop that? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Now, sit down here. Don't you know that we all worry about you when you're this late? Chief, Mike and Robbie are... she's coming to get me. Who's coming to get you? <laughs> oh, that's that Miss Pitts that moved in across the street. She's probably just making a neighborly call. You better get it. Come on, get a clean shirt. We'll talk about this later. Hey, it's Bob! Look out, Daddy! He's falling! <laughs> She's fainted. Help her up or something. <laughs> How much does it weigh, Robbie? 42 pounds, Chip. Okay, take him out of here now, will you, fellas? I've uh, prepared some of our special brew for you, Miss Pitts. I hope you'll enjoy it. Oh, tea. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Thank you, Bob. Sugar, cream. One love. Uh, one teaspoon. I don't know how you'll ever forgive us for giving you such a shock, Miss Pitts. Boy, you gave me so much lemonade, I could hardly walk. Oh, oh, oh. I hope you won't regret moving into our neighborhood. No, Mr. Douglas, I won't regret it. In fact, I'm going to like it here. Gee, I don't know. We're a pretty wild bunch. Not according to Irene Saylor. She's been telling me what wonderful people you are. She has. Well, that's, that's very nice of her. Thanks, Mike. Well, at least everything's cleared up. I beg your pardon? What do you mean? Oh. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing more to worry about. <laughs> if you ask me, one of us ought to get over there and make sure Cynthia is able to get home. <laughs> the last time I saw her, she was... Well, you're just going to have to take my word for it. Because I never would have believed... It has come to my attention that the children are playing a game that has several elements of danger in it. I inquired of my own child, who has herself been injured several times, and I'm sure you're all familiar with it. They call it softball. Madam now, Chairman? Now, the object of the... I haven't finished my thought, Mr. O'Casey. <laughs> okay, Madam Chairman. <laughs> Now, in this game of softball, the object seems to be to throw the ball at the legs of a running child. And, of course, it usually results in the child falling to the pavement. I move we petition the principal to exclude softball from the children's playground activities. Second the motion. Madam Chairman. <sighs> Mr. O'Casey wishes to speak. Thank you. <laughs> Madam Chairman, Madam Secretary, fellow members, I, uh... I think it's a little stupid to give up a good, healthy old game like sockball uh, just because of a couple of uh, clumsy kids. <laughs> oh, well, 
no, no, wait a minute, ladies, wait a minute. What I meant is that uh, I've got three grandsons, one of them in this school right now, and they all gave up uh, sockball because they heard it was a sissy game. Question. Yes, what is it? It has been moved and seconded that we petition the principal to exclude sockball from the children's playground What are you activity. sending to this school, a bunch of cream puffs? All those in favor now, please raise your right hand. Oh, Ma'am, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's kick this thing around a little more. Mr. O'Casey, you are in contempt of the chair. That is so true. <laughs> but let us stick to one subject at a time. What are you doing? Oh, <laughs> Hi, Dad, boy, just right by you. never believe it. you never believe it. Would you believe it. just a minute, please? Now, what's going on here? Where's Bud? He called me up, told me to put the dinner on. Oh, where is he? He's still at a committee meeting down at Chip School. Dad, guess what I found? It's a neatest deal. Oh, my gosh, you can't turn it down. It's something that... Why should a committee meeting last this late? I don't know. He said something about an argument over sock ball. 47, strip down, do a pipe. He's got to the stay there for a while and straighten it out. Oh. Carl Joy Dad, has one. He wants it all the time. His dad says it's the best thing Is this all we're going to have for dinner? House. Potatoes? Oh, no, I was going to make some toast. Oh, good. <laughs> you know, I'm not exactly a gourmet, but somehow just toasting potatoes doesn't do much for me. Real cheap, Dad. It's a steal. Uh, what's the steal? This gorgeous clunk, this car. Here, uh, open that. My gosh, I can mill the heads. I can put Answer a three-quarter gun. Will you, Robbie? Oh. Dad, hmm? uh, in a couple of days, the guy from State College is coming over to interview me for the scholarship. From State? Huh. I thought you wanted to go to Stanton. Well, I did, but my grades being what they are, I didn't think I had a chance. But anyway, these men from the Alumni Enrollment Committee, they're sort of, well, kind of all, all business-like. So? So what are we going to do about Bub? What do you mean, what are we going to do about him? Well, you know how he doesn't care what he says to people. I mean, this, this is pretty important to me, Dad. Mike, uh, maybe I'd better refresh your memory a little. At one time, your granddad was doing very well managing a movie theater. Yeah, and a plane deal. That's right. And when your mother died, he gave up everything and came into our home and did his best to take his daughter's place. He came into our house and cheered us up when we thought we'd never laugh again. Oh, I didn't mean anything, but... He not only had to do the housework, he had to attend committee meetings, go to social teas, and do a lot of things that most men wouldn't have the nerve to do. And he does it because he wants you boys represented in the neighborhood. I don't know about you, Mike, but to me that more than makes up for a little Irish temper and an occasional lack of tact. Hmm? Yeah. Slice of zip, huh? And then when I'm old enough to drive, I'll know all about engines and stuff and I'm to a Why, back. we got a neat grandpa! How come you always got a butt in? Are you just getting home from school? Yeah, Bub's down there and he's got a bunch of ladies yelling at him. What? They're yelling, squawking, flapping their arms. Me and Freddie Trotter have been watching through the window. Bub just stands there and smiles. They yell some more and a couple of them start crying. Boy, it's neat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Marilyn, now you've never been in here before, and you know what I want you to do, so try it again, okay? Hello, what are the weekly rates at this hotel? Um, well, I'm not sure. Nobody's ever stayed here a week. It's good. It's good, but uh, remember now, this is supposed to be vaudeville, so your delivery has to be much louder and delivered straight to the audience. Now, suppose we give it another try. Yes? Excuse me, I I'm looking for Robbie Douglas. He's my grandson. He forgot his lunch. Oh. <laughs> All right, Robbie, you may get your lunch. Now, we'll try that again, and then... You're as bad as you are at home. Here's your lunch. Thanks, so long. Are they doing a sketch up there? Yeah, so long. So long. <laughs> now, suppose we try it again. Hello, what are the weekly rates at this hotel? Well, I'm not sure. Nobody's ever stayed here a week. Would you like a room and bath? Um, just the room. It's five days till Saturday. 
Not bad, not bad at all. Not bad at all. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Marilyn, if you'll move slightly upstage and... <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, do you mind if I make a suggestion? No, no. Go right ahead. Oh, thank you very much. Well, the young lady is spoiling the second part of her gag by the way she tells the first part. She says something about being a, in a hotel a week, and then she says it's only five days till Saturday. I said, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll make a note of that. Now, Marilyn, if you'll move slightly upstage, and then when... No, 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 oh, no, 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 honey. When, when he says upstage, he means away from the audience. Uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Uh, Theodore. Uh, Theodore. You see, in the old days, they built the stages so they slanted toward the audience so you could see the actor better. Oh, by the way, Ted, my name is O'Casey. <laughs> Fine. Boy, I'll never forget the, the, the five daring down bars. It was in Sulphur Bay, Missouri, and the stage there was built on a 30-degree slant toward the audience. They came zooming out there and zoomed right into the orchestra pit. <laughs> It was a roller skate. <laughs> That's very interesting. It was interesting. You could bet on that. Were, were you in vaudeville? Were I in vaudeville? Well, I was the stage manager in this house. I've got the theater in my blood. Yes, I, I, I see. Well, we'd better get back to rehearsing for the jamboree. Right. Hotel jokes. <laughs> now, I got a minute. Now, you step over there, Johnny. Listen to these jokes. You laugh at them, too. Uh, now, listen to these jokes. Are all... And you play them with me, will you? Uh, I'll say to you... Uh, no, but you better say to me... Uh, What's the name of the hotel we stopped at in Detroit? What's the name of the hotel we stopped at in Detroit? Uh, I don't know. I'll have to look at my towels. <laughs> uh, you, you say to me, uh, I'll be the bellhop this time. Laugh now. I'll be the bellhop. Good night. <laughs> oh, hi, Robbie. Are you busy? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Look, uh, Robbie, if it's about the car. Dad, will you tell Bub to quit coming by the school? You won't be able to get your learner's permit till next year, and... What's, uh, what's Bub got to do with the car deal? Well, nothing. Oh. What did you say? Well, Bub said that he came by my school to bring me my lunch. But I think that he really wanted to get in the jamboree rehearsals. <laughs> I'm sure he did. What's wrong with that? Well, he butts in and, and talks real loud and calls Mr. Theodore Ted and embarrasses everyone. I can just hear him. <laughs> and I end up looking like a goof in front of Marilyn Turn Thurston. Marilyn Turn Thurston? She's a girl. Oh, thanks. In my class. Anyway, will you tell him? Look, Robbie, if you're so anxious to hurt your granddad's feelings, why don't you tell him? I don't want to hurt his feelings. Fine. Let's just leave it that way, huh? Good night, Robbie. Well, no matter who tells him, it's going to hurt his feelings, right? Good night, Dad. Good night, Robbie. If I can't have a car, how about just a motor? Good night, Robbie. Night, Dad. <laughs> Fine. Takes care of that. You must understand, Michael, this meeting doesn't necessarily mean state is granting you the scholarship. I'm simply appointed by the committee to meet you and submit my impressions. Oh, I, I, I do understand that, Mr. Finch. Fine. Now, there are a few tiresome forms oh, for you to fill out. Oh, I didn't know you had company, Mike. Oh, uh, Bub, this is Mr. Finch from State College. Uh, hey. Mr. Finch, this is my grandfather, Mr. O'Casey. How, How are, are you? you, Mr. Finch? I'm glad to know you. Thank you. So you've come to try and get this grandson of mine into that state college of yours, huh? Well, uh... Well, you fellas surely get around, don't you? 
State College hears about a high school boy that's a pretty fair trackman and you're Johnny on the spot, right? Well, State College is more interested in a boy's grades and character than in his athletic prowess, Mr. O'Casey. Sure, sure. But the fact that he ran the 440 and 51 seconds flat doesn't uh, hurt any, does it? Bob, Mr. Finch doesn't even know about that. You want to bet? Well, I can't stand around here and chew the rag all afternoon. I got a lot of work to do. It's nice to know you, Mr. Finch. Nice to know you. Now, don't misunderstand me. I don't see anything rotten about a college looking around for a fine young athlete. <laughs> They darn near all do it. Why shouldn't you? Get up the dishes. Bob, uh, we'll take over with the dishes tonight. You, uh, yeah. you go on and read the paper, and the boys now clean up the kitchen. Hmm? Well, you twisted my arm. Now look, fellas. Now don't you guys think you're fooling anybody? Get me out of the way so you can gripe about the food. <laughs> Let's get busy, you guys. Well, that was a nice, quiet dinner. Now, what's bothering you fellas anyway? It isn't the food. Teachers, no, it's your vote. It's what, Chip? Chip, I asked you a question. Mike says if we tell you, you'll get sore. Oh, that's a swell thing to say. Now you gotta tell him. Tell me what? Well, Bob keeps coming down to the school, and for a while it was kind of funny. But now the kids say I got a goofy grandfather. That makes ladies cry. And and the principal. And I'm just sure Mr. Theodore's gonna, gonna, gonna pull me out of the jamboree if Bunk keeps coming home. to rehearsals. And Marilyn Turnthurston, why she's Marilyn who? Turnthurston, that's a girl. <laughs> Mike, have you any uh, coals to add to the fire? Uh, no. No, Dad. Don't you boys know that your granddad thinks the sun rises and sets on you? He I tried to tell him that, Dad. What are you, a big angel? What are you, a big angel or something? Just because you don't want to tell Dad how Bob wrecked you going to state? The interviewer from State College was here? Well, Bob didn't mean anything, Dad. I didn't want to go there anyway. All right, boys, I'll, uh, I'll talk to Bob. Do you have to, Dad? He didn't mean to louse things up. We all know that, Mike. But this time, he... You uh, fellas clean up the kitchen, huh? And Mike, lay off Robbie. Thanks, Dad. Every time Mike smacks Robbie, I get hurt. <laughs> must have elbow sharpeners in that school. Look at this sleeve, will you? Bob. Okay, Steve, I can see the jigs up, so fire away. I got it coming, so let me have it. Well, Bob, uh, I've been talking to the boys. It, uh, it's nothing, nothing too serious. It's... Oh, yes, it is. The food's been terrible. After all, Robbie doesn't ask for much, and I, I saved the money out of the food budget. You know, you said yourself that uh, someday you'd have to give him a direct answer about a car. Well, uh, Bob, what I well, want... He's the only one that knows anything about a car around the house here. Wait, wait, wait a minute, Bob. What, what, what are you talking about? I can't hear a thing. Me neither. Hey, knock it off. How'd you like somebody listening in on you while Dad was tearing you apart? Finish the dishes. You 
know, the little nuthead's a pretty nice kid. And this way he might really learn something about cars before he starts driving them. Uh, do you think I did wrong? No. No, you, you, you did fine, bud. Good, good. They put it in the garage this afternoon, and Robbie will find it in the morning. Now, don't say anything. No. No, I won't say anything, bud. I sure hope Dad is taking it easy. Well, you've uh, got it pretty well cleaned up, huh? I just couldn't tell him right now. Gee, Dad, if Bob shows up at that rehearsal tomorrow, I've had it. I'll do it tonight after you fellas have hit the sack. I sure hope we're doing the right thing. Well, so do I. And if you fellas have been giving me the right dope, I'm sure we are. Well, sure, but... Now, wait a minute. Whether he meant it or not, Bub has been stepping on your toes, right? And you've all asked me to do something about it, right? Okay, I think you've got legitimate complaints, and I'm going to straighten Bub out tonight. Thank you very much. Goodbye. You must be cooking up quite a deal. You've been on the phone all evening. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, boys all sacked out? Yeah, all but Mike. He's still hitting the books. I wonder how Bubble will take this. Well, if it was me, I sure wouldn't stick around where I wasn't wanted. I didn't mean that. Sure would be funny not having Bubba around. Next month, I'm going to reorganize this whole laundry deal. Here, uh, let me give you a hand. All right. Well, what's the problem? <laughs> problem? Now, don't give me that no problem routine. There's been something on your mind all evening now. Come on, out with it. I'll get it. It won't get any better keeping it to yourself, you know. Hello? Oh, no, no, that's all right. I'll call him. Robbie? If you're sorry about Robbie's surprise, I'll take it back. Yeah. Telephone. You can take it in my room. I wouldn't have bought it in the first place. That isn't it, Bob. Oh. Yeah? Oh, Robbie. I'm sorry to bother you so late, but I I wanted to be sure you had the light cues for the Jamboree dress rehearsal tomorrow. Oh, yes, sir. Well, fine, fine, fine. Oh, and uh, by the way, Robbie, uh, about your grandfather. Oh, uh, I knew you were going to be talking to me about that, sir. I'm sorry, but I, I just, there's... I haven't had a chance to tell you how, how much I appreciate his coming to rehearsals every day. You do? <laughs> so if you don't want to tell me, don't. Something about Mike, maybe? Well, in a way, yes. Uh, and Robbie and Chip. Oh, 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 that could be pretty serious. I want to find out sometime, you know. Hi. Hi. Hey, Steve, listen, two heads are... What are you doing down here? Don't you know it's after 10 o'clock? I know, but I got to talk to Dad. Well, talk to him in the morning. Steve. Jeepers, Dad. Robbie, uh, answer the phone, will you? But Jeepers, Dad, I just got to You talk heard him to you. answer the phone. Oh, oh, Steve, Steve, there's no use beating around the bush. Actually, Bub, there's no real problem. No. Mike! Hey, Mike! It's for Mike. It's for Mike. How could you tell? Yeah! <laughs> Get the phone! Mrs. Tyler was telling me there's, uh, there's a little excitement down at Chip's school. No kidding. Well, I must have missed it. No, no, I mean uh, at your committee meeting. 
Oh, that. Dad. I'm like a rooster in a hen house down there. The more I crow, the more they squawk. <laughs> they love it. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Mr. Finch. I'll be there. And I, uh, I'm sorry about my grandfather. Michael, whether or not you get a scholarship to State College does not depend on your grandfather. Oh, I know that. As a matter of fact, I rather enjoyed him. It's refreshing these days to listen to a man who speaks frankly, even if he is wrong. You're not worried about Mrs. Towler and that bunch of bimbos, are you, Steve? Who cares about them? What else did she say? Well, Bob... Pipe down, Robbie. Your father's talking. What else did she say, Steve? Well, she... she... Bob, Mr. Theater called and wanted to know, are you going to be at the final rehearsal? <laughs> I never missed a final rehearsal in my life. What's the matter with that Theodore? He says he sure appreciates all the help you've been giving him. Yeah? Now, Ted's all right. He's a nice fellow. There's nothing wrong with him. Oh, what else did Mrs. Towler say, Steve? Dad. Here, Robbie, uh, run my car in the garage, will you? I forgot and left it in the driveway. Sure, Dad, but now we don't have to tell Bub what we've been talking about. Dad. I suppose that darn taller woman. Hey, Steve, don't send Robbie out there. That's where he's... Tell me what? About Mr. Finch. He just called me and, and told me I'm still in line for the scholarship. Well, I knew all about that. I sewed that deal up two or three days ago. <laughs> now, come on, Steve. Quit stalling. Well, when Mrs. Toller called, she also said she was sorry she blew up at the meeting. There's no problem, bub. Never has been. Right, Mike? <laughs> yeah. Well, then, doggone it, Steve, what's the big idea getting me all stirred up? How come Mr. Finch, Mr. Theodore, and Mrs. Towler just all happened to call at the same time? Yeah, that is a coincidence, isn't it? Yeah. Fine thing. Here I am trying to be real helpful and nobody to help. Hey, what's that? Man, oh, stop acting like a welcome home to me. Man. 